Welcome to GRIT, the Real Estate Growth Mindset Podcast, hosted by Brian Charlesworth, founder of Sisu. Sisu provides growth automation software for real estate. You'll hear stories from real estate thought and technology leaders, team owners, and brokers on how they grew their business in a rapidly changing industry. You'll learn how to transform your brokerage and teams into a high-performing and analytics-driven business so you have a new, durable, competitive advantage against disruption in your market. So let's get right into it. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GRIT podcast. I'm Brian Charlesworth. I'm the founder and uh, CEO of Sisu and your host of the show. And today I'm here with Scott Solari. And Scott, I actually met a long time ago and actually got to know him a few years ago really well as we spent a weekend wedding together for Josh Cunningham uh, <laughs> over at Rockerbox, right? Yeah. Yeah, we had a great time. It was, yeah, it was so, good. We had a we had quality time hang, uh, hanging out, not just in passing, like at a real estate event, right? Which is, it's hard it, to spend a lot of time. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you, you get to know people on a business level at a real estate event, but not so much on a personal level. So I really enjoyed getting to know you and your wife and the, the rest of the crew that was there. That was a lot of fun. Um, but Scott, I just want to introduce Scott really quick. Scott has been in the industry for a long, long time. He's actually... I think most people probably don't know this, but Scott's a licensed real estate agent, as am I. Uh, <laughs> Scott also used to be an appraiser uh, and a certified appraiser, and he spent a long time, uh, seven, seven years or so over at Viral Marketing. And I think that's how most of us in this real estate industry know Scott is from Viral Marketing. Now, Viral Marketing, uh, Scott obviously spent a lot of time with customers and I do this, you know, I'm, I'm on the phone half of the day or on Zoom, I should say, with different customers, really consulting them on their business. And Scott's done that same thing over at Viral, really consulting them on how they can drive more leads and how they can grow and build their business. So I'm really looking forward to spending some time with Scott today on just like, what are, what are some of the most important things you guys can be doing to grow your business? So Absolutely. We'll, get, we'll get into some of those things. But Scott, uh, thanks for joining me today. I'm looking, yeah, forward, no, looking forward to this time together. No, no problem, Brian. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, I look forward to sharing, you know, everything that I've learned from others and, and hopefully passing it on to, to, to real estate teams from a business growth standpoint, which is a lot of the, the knowledge that I've gained over the last eight years and in, in being in this industry, you know? Yeah. Awesome. So I actually don't even have any notes in front of me today, Scott. It's just, this, this is just us hanging out and chilling together. So nice. Anyway, uh, one thing I didn't mention is Scott actually joined RealSync. How long has that been now, Scott? So in, in January, so and really, Brian, I don't have much of a tech background. So when you get on the phone with me, I, I'll be like, yeah, I don't, I don't know much. But when it comes to the, to those little details, but, but what I do know is, is what you need to be doing in your business and, and how tech can fit into that and, and uh, how automation fits into that and having softwares and, and systems in place to make your team more productive so you can convert more leads and generate more revenue at the end of the day, right? That's what we're all talking about. Yeah, and I mean, if you look at the business today, it's amazing to me how many people there are now that are just crushing it. You know, I don't think there used to be, if you look back 10, 15 years, and I grew up with a father who was in real estate, it didn't used to be that you had all this tech that you could leverage and you could sell I mean, I did a podcast a week ago, a few weeks ago with somebody, it was actually a web, not a podcast, but a webinar, and they had closed over 1,600 units year to date. <laughs> so like that, that was unheard of, right? So how do, totally. we, how do we all leverage that? And that's why I wanted to have Scott on the show today. I really want to talk about just what we can all be doing. Most of our listeners here are running teams or brokerages or they might be powerhouse agents. So Scott, I really want you to just dive in and like, what should these people be doing? So I'm going to start by just maybe going back a little bit. And if you look back at your time in this business, what are the most important things that people need to do? Like the absolute things that people must be doing to really be growing their business in today's environment? Well, I mean, the first thing is when you start off as a real estate agent in this business, you know, most of them are coming with a sales background and 
approaching it as if they're going to be doing transactions. And before they know it, they have a, a business on their hands that they need to run. And I'd say the, there's a couple of things that you need to have. One, you need to be able to hire someone like an admin, an assistant transaction coordinator, that like whatever that position is for you to leverage your time and bite the bullet on just not making as much commission. I mean, you can, you'll get stuck in that, that hamster wheel as you will, if you don't do that. So that's the first step to getting to like a team level in a sense or having a team, right? The other thing is you have to have a CRM. If you're working out of a spreadsheet or you don't have a CRM, like, Oh my God, get, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Get out of business or something, but you have to have a, a place where you can organize your contact data, um, your lead data, like have stages of like the, how, what that leads going through, whether it's ready now or, you know, 30 to, to 90 days, or it's a year out. Like you have to have visibility. That's the first step. You have to have that CRM. So I say those are like the yeah, two the main things. Is- And the CRM in the real estate industry is a little bit different than Salesforce in most industries. CRM is going to give you an IDX site. Correct. Which is going to allow people to come in and think that you are the MLS in your area and search for leads. And then it's going to require that after three or four clicks, they sign up to be a part of your database, basically. Yeah. So that's one thing. And then, and then the CRMs in the real estate space are also focused on now you captured that lead let's follow up with that lead right and then like i mean there's a million and one sales system you know best practices that we've seen in real estate you know all these different coaching companies and like how quickly you have to get to the lead and and the campaigns and the scripts and all that stuff that's been around for a long time because it's sales driven this type of stuff is like operational where it's like you have to have this in place to stay organized Otherwise you're just running around. Right. So I, I think Brian, those are the, the first steps. And then the, the next step is like, you know, as we talked to you, like getting out of your comfort zone and understanding that hiring the right people is just as important as closing the next deal. You have to have the right people in your business so that you can delegate and leverage yourself and start to do, start to share time where you're not just doing sales, but you're also working on the business. So fitting that into what you're doing every week, because if you're just working in the business, you're never going to be able to really grow and hit those, those next levels that you need to hit. You need to be working on it. And that means putting more process and systems, getting more softwares and automation and things in your business that are going to generate more leads and then having the right people to convert those leads, which is, you know, buyer's agents, you know, eventually hiring a listing agent so that you can start replacing all the sales that you're doing. And yeah, you're going to make less money, but your business is going to start to grow exponentially. And then eventually you're going to make more money, right? So you have to kind of take you're, that you're step. Gonna, let's be specific there. You're going to make less money on a per transaction basis. Right. But ultimately, if you're doing this right, you should make more money. And obviously in the, in the transition period, when the business isn't really growing possibly, you're going to make less money, but that's, that's short term, right? Yeah. So like I had a, I had a client that I worked with a long time. He's a good friend. Um, and he, he knew that that was like, it was where he was. He was still doing the sales. He needed to hire someone to run his whole sales team. He brought them in. He paid him like 150 grand a year in salary. Right. Just, and then like with bonuses and a whole huge structure. And that first year he, he went down by half of what he made, personally. Right. But in the next year, the business grew exponentially. He was making more than what he had been making two years previous. And he went on vacation for six months with his girl and just got out. Right. So like it's, you know, and that's, that was one of his goals or dreams. He had been doing the business for a long time. Right. But he, but sometimes you have to take that step. You have to be willing to, to be uncomfortable. As we all say, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing right? You have to be uncomfortable. And sometimes taking those steps that are uncomfortable and taking that risk is going to allow you to, to live the life that you want to live and, and have the business that you want to have, you know? Yeah. I think when you and I look at this business, Scott, we're always thinking, okay, first step is you're going to become a great agent. Then you're going to build a team. Then you might get a brokerage. Then you're going to bring in all these ancillary businesses. You know, you're going to bring in, you're going to start a mortgage company. You're going to start a title company. So we, we see this all the time, but I had dinner the other night with a couple from California who came into Utah and she has had a team of five or six agents several times, but yeah. she's not a great manager and she knows that she's like, 
I'm better off just selling houses. And what she actually hires, and so this is just a different way to build your business, but what she right. actually hires are showing assistants because she doesn't want to show houses all day. She's going to prospect. She's going to generate, actually, her prospecting was all inbound. She generates a tremendous amount of leads, gets those leads, gets appointments scheduled. Someone goes out and shows the houses. 99% of her business is uh, buyer's agents. So the opposite of what everyone says to do, Right. but she's crushing it, right? She's making... Yeah. I'm guessing she's making close to a million dollars a year. And, that, and that's like amazing. And I love those types of stories because what you're identifying is a person that knows the type of business they want to have, right? And they've laid out a business plan or they've made mistakes and trying to grow it in the wrong way. And they finally identified what they want out of their business. And that's key too. We talk about, you know, this, these stages, like you said, from sales, the team, to then a huge team and having all these extra businesses and all that. But if that's not what you want, then don't do that. Don't do it because that's what others are doing it. Build the business that you want to have based on what fits you. And if you know you suck at certain things, you got to hire people to handle those things for you, right? So you don't have to do yeah. them. You can focus on, if you are just, you love being a salesperson, then you should be that salesperson. Hire someone to run your business for you. And you could just be a yeah, salesperson in your business, right? I mean, I mean, it's, it's fitting a square peg in a round hole, right? I mean, that's right. such an old saying, but it, it's, it's so true. And I've, I've met with so many teams and I know Springs, uh, Spring and her business partner have really focused on this as of late is I'm not going to try to get everyone to do four transactions a month. If yeah. somebody's good with two, let them do two. You're, you know, right? Some, somebody might want 10. Let's help them get to 10. But don't try to have just bunch everyone in the same bucket because people have different goals and I think as leaders we can help people accomplish what they want but we can't help people accomplish what we want right because what we want isn't what they want so don't try to don't try to do that and it's the same for you and your business just because someone like Gary Keller has been out there preaching for years and years and years you have to build a team and then you have to do this and this and this well if that's not for you it's not for you right Scott yeah absolutely and I love what you just said because it's the way you get out of your business what you want is by helping the people that work in your business get what they want. Thank that's you. the ultimate. Exactly. Yeah, that's the ultimate. And then you'll, you'll get everything you want out of your business, right? And if, if you're helping people that aren't a fit for your business, then they can move on too and you figure that out along the way. But I think it's coming from a place of knowing that if you truly want to help people live the type of life and achieve the type of goals that they they want out of being an agent on your team, they're going to stick around for a long, long time where we see this huge disconnect and this turnover all the time, Brian, of I've heard of stories a million times of like, yeah, I'd fire all my agents and start all over again. That's a yep. reflection of the business owner and you trying to hire people to serve you and not hiring people to help serve them. Right. And if you, if you hire people to serve them, it's going to serve you in the long run. Yeah, I, I think it's that. And I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of people in real estate have, they're, they're such great salespeople. And then yeah. they're like, oh, I'm going to take this to the next level. Well, for you to take it to the next level, you need to continue to grow and expand your skills beyond being a great salesperson. Now it's time to become a great leader. And for you to become a great leader, you need to grow. And so what are you doing to grow internally so that you can help others then become great salespeople and others grow? And so it, the minute we stop growing, the minute we lose our ability to really uh, lead other people, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're never just on a plateau, right? You, you're either growing or you're going the opposite direction. Right? Exactly. So, so yeah, absolutely. So, you, you know, and, and um, yeah, so again, the, the people around you are going to make them everything else that you do in your business successful. And what I mean by that is, when we start talking about the systems, the processes, uh, the softwares that you start incorporating to whether it's lead generation or lead cultivation or just visibility when you, you know, add a platform like Sisu, whenever, like when that's the right time for your, for your team, all these things don't work well. If you don't have people that are using these systems in the right way, and putting the right data and information into these systems because you've, you've hired a good team around you, right? Well, and doesn't that come back to really being a, being a leader that yeah. requires it? I mean, it does. Being the CEO it does. of CSU, I see it all the time. 
we have customers and the bulk of our customers, thankfully, use Sisu at an extremely high level. And then you have the other people who say, I can't get my agents to do it. Well, is that, is that Sisu or is that a learning opportunity for you as a leader? I right. can't get agents to do this? Okay, there's a problem. <laughs> and the problem yeah. isn't Sisu, right? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. like, you, you could ask yourself the same thing. Like, Brian, how much have you grown in the, I mean, how, how long has Sisu been around now? Four, four or five years? Four years. Four years. Four years. Like, you know, how much have you grown as a leader, uh, you know, building the business that you have now, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I have to continue to grow. I listen to podcasts every morning, listen to books all the time, um, meet with people like you all the time. That's part of the reason I love having a podcast is I get to learn every single time that I have a podcast. Uh, so yeah. anyway, just, just, just a, it's a really fun industry to be in because everybody in this industry, at least the top people in this industry are really all growth mindset and focused on constantly growing. And I just yeah. love surrounding myself with people like that. So a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurship, which is, um, which is great to be around because people have to innovate all the time. And, and like you said, keep growing and being, becoming better leaders and, and better facilitators of, of education and information, like helping others and connecting with other businesses. I mean, there's so many amazing things about being in an industry like, like real estate uh, from this standpoint, you know, from a, from a business to business standpoint, it's exciting. Yeah. So Scott, let's dig in deeper. So you were at viral for seven years. You've been at real sync now for the bulk of this year or for all of this year. So, um, I just want to hear a little bit more, like, what are you seeing? What are these top people doing? What, what are the keys that people need to do? I, I think most people listening to this podcast, honestly, today, they're either top, top agents, they're agents on a team, or they are team owners or, or broker owners. I think they all have a CRM. So yeah, taking your business to the next level beyond that. Now, what are some of the things you're doing that you see out there? Because you see a lot that, that people are doing to like really leverage and take that to the next level what are some other technologies whatever what are some of the things whatever you want to talk about scott but yeah yeah a lot of the the big teams that i'm talking to are you know it's it's finding the workflow within their business through all the different tech that they've started to apply right and you, we're talking some big teams are talking i mean you were talking about a team that did 1600 units right like they obviously have a lot of different softwares or lead gen um, systems to, to have that amount of business. Right. But then also they have to have a lot of visibility in their business. So like specifically what I'm seeing and, and, and maybe a lot of it has to do with, I work at real things. A lot of people I'm talking to about technology now, but yeah. everything needs to be automated, man. And, and I'm going to step back for a second because the, like when I was at viral for years, it was like, there's all these new amazing virtual assistant companies that popped up and, it was like hiring more staff at a more efficient cost, but that are really high quality employees to do a lot of the administrative type stuff. But we've kind of gotten to a, a point where the technology is good enough now to automate a lot of that, where you don't need to have that labor cost. Right. So I think every person I'm talking to is like, how do I create this tech stack, this workflow, of all my different systems. So they're efficient and I don't have my agents logging into 10 different systems because they're not productive that way. And so it's like getting more efficient. That's a lot of the conversation that I'm having recently is like, how can we be more efficient, more productive, better data, less errors, right? And, and having the visibility of what's happening with my team, right? Broker owners are a little bit different because they'll have like a team within their brokerage and a lot of times they're more focused on their team rather than the, the accountability necessarily for, for like, you know, if they have hundreds of agents, right? Um, but the, the team owner that has maybe 30, 40, 50 agents and you're trying to keep them all accountable. I mean, first of all, you need something like CSU. So you have visibility, right? You need to have automation between that and your CRM. You need to have a transaction coordination system so that you're, that's automated into whether it's back into your CRM or into CSU so that your transaction coordinators aren't having to go into two or three different systems to add the same data over and over and over again. Right. And then and, on the and that was such a hot point, Scott, that we had so many customers asking us to build that, that we finally just did it. And so yeah. now most of our customers at CSU are not just using us for visualization, gamification, those types of things. 
but also using us for their task management, commission management, document management, that stuff as well. So, yeah. So anyway, it's, we, it's don't like care. we don't care if you go somewhere else for it, we'll integrate, right? Because we have an open API for it. But yeah, absolutely. Those, I think that is equally as important as the CRM because the CRM keeps your salespeople on task, but that backend stuff, that task management keeps your admin on task. Yeah, yeah, and, totally. And we, one of the fun things we've done here is we actually now have leaderboards for the number of tasks that different TCs are completing. So imagine having three TCs and uh, you wanna see how many tasks they're doing. Well, they each get assigned, let's just say 30 tasks per contract to close. And if somebody's doing double or triple the number of tasks, you know which TC you need to replace, right? Yeah. So anyway, it's been fun. It's been fun to watch that, but. Uh, That's awesome. That's awesome. Great. Great but Yeah, those are, those are the things that we're talking about now, right? Where it's, I feel like, you know, and, and again, you're in the same realm as I am. The people that we're talking to now, you know, when I was at Viral, I was talking to the single agent all the way up to the, to the big broker. When I, at RealSync, it's much more targeted as far as who I'm having conversations with. And I think it's a lot more teams and broker owners, right? So some of the sales practices are already in place. It's not as much guidance right. on that, right? It's much exactly. more about what we were just talking about, which is the visibility with what their team's actually doing and then getting more efficient so that their, their agents can be more productive and that the leads aren't getting wasted. Like their conversion rates can go up. And Automation helps with that. I mean, one of, uh, one of the teams we were working with when they um, integrated VoicePad into Boomtown, their conversion went up 300%. So why do you, Brian, why do you think that is? Because uh, computers always follow up and agents don't. Exactly. That would be my guess. That is correct. So what was happening okay. is the agents had to log into another system they followed up a couple times, didn't get a hold of the lead, and the lead sat there in the other system and never got into the CRM. The CRM needs to be your hub of, you know, when the lead comes in, new registration to close, right? It has to be your hub where your agents live. And then you have this tech stack. Think of it as like a web of, you have the, the CSU, the transaction coordination system, and then all the different lead systems like VoicePad or structurally or why lopo i mean these are some of the systems that we integrate with but these are all really great platforms that you can be working with and all of a sudden when they're all automated you know that all the leads are flowing into your crm and then your agents can stay on top of them and your conversion rate is going to go up yeah so one of the things you just said scott you said the i, I don't know if i misunderstood you but you said the crm needs to be your system from it needs to be your hub kind of your hub your where hub eight, from, what, where from what to what just in general for your agents to be going in so that yeah, they're not where having they go to, every day for their lead follow-up basically. Exactly. So they're yeah. not having to log in to like, you know, structurally and figure out what the bot is doing. Right. Or yeah. they have to go log in the voice pad and see the leads that are sitting in there. Like you, your agent's not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. Right. They're yeah. not going to go into three or four different places where they have to do lead follow-up. It's hard enough to get them to follow up with leads as it is. Even if they say they will, they can't do a good job. No, it's I wouldn't do it. Multitasking, right? <laughs> I wouldn't do it either. I have, I have HubSpot. That's where all my tasks are. It's where all my leads are. It's where I go. If I had to go into four or five systems, I wouldn't do it either. I wouldn't have time. Who has time for that? So digging in a little bit, Scott, you guys at RealSync have built a bunch of integrations for us uh, as well as other people. I know uh, you have several connections from CSU into CRMs and into things like dot loop. Tell us more about some of the integrations that you guys are doing over at RealSync. And then I want to dive into this, this new thing that you guys are about to roll out and are testing right now. If you've been enjoying Grit, please help us continue to grow the channel by leaving a five-star review and sharing it with a friend. Now back to Grit. Yeah, absolutely. So we have three new integrations in development and they're all to you. Well, I mean, what you and other apps. So Sierra Interactive is another CRM. And you know, I keep mentioning CRMs because that is the hub where the agents live to convert leads, right? So we have to be connected to them and we have to be connecting them to different systems. So Sierra is one. Um, we're building a bi-directional integration with you guys. 
We're building a bi-directional integration with Chime and Sisu. And then we're also building a bi-directional integration with Brivity. And these are all happening currently. Timelines, it depends. And we can get into the technical aspects of what happens in a public API or, or a, an API that's facing forward that you build a connector off of. Sometimes they're really good. Sometimes there needs to be work done on them. So sometimes it takes time to get to wait a little bit for these things to get updated. But those are all, those are all happening as we speak. We're also connecting, we're gonna be connecting Brivity uh, most likely to YLOPO as well as, uh, as structurally. And then um, we are uh, considering additional integrations with, uh, with Chime and Sierra. So those are happening as we speak, you know, over the next couple of months, hopefully we're going to be in beta on all of them and, uh, and testing them out with new users from these different CRM companies. Right. And then also on our roadmap is, you know, we connect currently CSU in one direction, sky slip into CSU and then dot loop into CSU, which is what a lot of the beta users wanted originally. Um, we are also looking at, DocuSign suites and like their software and then brokerment as well down the road. But, you know, those would be additional connectors, but I think that would be into next year. Um, just looking at those things, but we know like the transaction coordination piece is really important uh, to get into CSU or into your CRM, depending on the workflow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you guys, have, obviously we want at CSU, we want to be connected to everybody. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's your front end CRM or your e-signature platform on the back end. We want that connection and there's value for us. There's value for the, the other partner on the other end of it. Um, yeah, absolutely. So you, guys have, you guys have been a, an important part of us uh, getting added integrations as we, we love anybody that will do those integrations, but you guys have been the most aggressive in doing those for us. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, um, no problem. You don't have to thank me. It's a, it's a win-win for us. And there's a, you know, a handful of other middleware companies out there, but our job is to strive to be the best one and the most specific with real estate and understanding the workflows of real estate teams and brokers so that when we do build these integrations, the use case fits the way that the teams actually use their systems, right? Right. Yep. So you guys have been focused on doing that now for a couple of years. How many total integrations do you guys have? We have about 15, I would say. 15 different applications we connect to, but a lot okay. of them connect to like half a dozen. Multiples, yeah. So it's like these, <laughs> it's a huge web. You've got, you've got 15 different companies that sit there and you're connecting them to different. Yeah, so when you come at it, you're like, oh, that's not that many. But then when you click on one and it shows you it connects to eight other applications, like, oh, got it. Okay, it starts to make a little more yeah. sense, right? So yeah, there, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of bridges in a sense, is what I like to call them. A lot of bridges happening all over the place with these different applications. So you guys' goal is to basically be the middleware connector for all real estate technology companies. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, that would be, what we don't want to be a Zapier, right? Where you connect to everything in all industries. We want to be robust and like add a ton of value in every connector that we build, right? Where the team And you're 100% specific to real estate is my understanding, is that correct? Correct, correct. So we, we do, we wanna be the number one middleware company in real estate, 100%. And then over time, we, we will slowly incorporate ourselves into the title and mortgage industries as well. Um, and there's a long-term development plan on the reason why we're gonna do that. But, but yeah, we wanna be the best in real estate, the most custom, the most robust. And, and what I mean by that is like that, the integration does the most, right? Like if you use a Zap in CSU or your CRM changes some stuff in their API, it's gonna break and you're gonna have to work on it. We, we wanna handle all that for our clients and for your clients so that things just work and they don't have to worry about it and it's in the background, you know? And if they do, if something does break, which, at some point, if something one changes something, it's always going to. You guys are there to support them and handle it instead of them having to handle it on their own. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Where they can just chat us and then we get to work on it where they don't have to log into a middlework software and try to figure it out themselves, right? Great. That kind of defeats the purpose of like being productive. Okay. So uh, <laughs> for the sake of time, I want to jump in and learn about this new Chrome extension you guys have because 
Chrome extensions are something I absolutely love. Uh, yeah. the, that I use the most, and I use this every day right now, is Loom to yeah. create videos. I love Loom. For our customers. Yeah. And so uh, Loom is, is such a great extension. And you guys, being in this space that you've been in, you saw this need for this new Chrome extension. Tell us about that. Yeah. So, you know, obviously we're creating these bridges and these integrations and automation, but there wasn't any way to do that from people's Gmail. And a lot of people live in their Gmail, in their Gmail inbox, right? And they work out of it. As much as you as a team leader want them working out of their CRM, a lot of times it's a little bit clunky sending emails and they, they're not comfortable doing that. And, and they end up just reverting back to their, their Gmail. So we thought, how can we help them be more productive, more efficient, save time, and hopefully create more business for the team lead. And that's a Gmail extension, right? So it's an extension that works with Chrome right now only. And just like your little logo that you click, that Loom logo that you click, Brian, there's a little real sync logo that you click on, this extension pops up. It works currently with Boomtown, Firepoint, and Follow Up Boss. And um, they're all, uh, we've been talking to all of them, which is great. So there's a, you know, there's a big push uh, happening as we speak right now. But this allows you while you're in your Gmail to add a new contact to Boomtown. You can do it right there. Basically you hit, you click in the email, you click on the email and it's gonna populate all the, all the data over. And, and whatever, whatever's there, email, phone number, name, it's gonna just fill that populate. It fills it in and you add like the lead source and a couple other things that are required by the CRM. And then boom, you add the contact. And now you have a contact that quickly from your sphere into your database. And then you can work on that contact record. So you can change the lead status. If you need to change it to hot or nurture, whatever it is, you can apply a tag. You can create you do a that task. From extension. You do it from the extension. With Boomtown, you can actually create a task, click on calendar sync, and it syncs within a second into your Gmail calendar. You can add notes. You can actually track emails back into Boomtown and Firepoint. Follow-up boss already has a Gmail email integration. So their emails are going back and forth, but Boomtown and Firepoint don't. So you actually save that email thread as an activity note in the CRM. And we both know for compliance purposes, that's a big deal because a lot of the communications happening in Gmail, and I've talked to teams that are using some of these CRMs and they have to copy and paste the email information <laughs> into a yeah. note. I think about the time waste on that. You're in Gmail, you got to go over to the CRM and I'm not trying to throw them under the bus, but it is what it is. It's a functionality thing. And they got to type in the name of the, the lead, pull up that contact record, copy paste. I mean, think about how long that takes. You can do all of it with the click of a button now. Yeah. I mean, I used to, uh, when I first got into this industry uh, to help spring grow her real estate team. Yeah. I remember the days of adding those into Boomtown and it's a time suck for sure. So the thing yeah. I love about you guys is you share the exact same vision with us, which is automate everything, eliminate all duplicate data entry. Everything should be stored in one place and it just, it'll make your business flow so much better. So I love that you guys are doing that. You said you have about 40 teams in beta on this, and I didn't realize you had connectors into all three of those CRMs at this point. Yeah, so we went live with a free trial. So if you, uh, I'll give you a link to post uh, with this podcast, but there's a, there's a free trial. So you can sign up for it, no obligation, no credit card required. You just sign up and you can start using the extension right away. It's super, super clean that way. And then those other three CRMs, Brian, that I mentioned that were in the process of, building out integrations. Well, that comes with the Gmail extension as well with those other three. So we'll have six in total um, available and uh, we're super excited about it. And we're super excited with the roadmap with this extension. And then, uh, you know, eventually being able to maybe create a, a loop through this extension and dot loop or sky slope or some of these other transaction systems, you know, the sky's kind of the limit. And then, you know, uh, eventually we have some plans to, of how we can connect this with title and mortgage and, and that's part of our roadmap. But, you know, it's very exciting. And, and I know as well as you do, and when you get into that 30 day window, 45 day window of a transaction, it's an email shit show between the buyer, the mortgage person, title, escrow, it's chaos. So someone needs to organize it and hopefully real, real syncs up for the task. All right. Awesome. So, 
Uh, Scott, is there anything else you want to share about any of that? I have a couple of questions that I like to ask all of our guests and I'd sure. like to dive into those since we have just a few more minutes. Um, yeah. What is your favorite book or favorite source of learning? It could be podcasts, whatever, but I just want to know like, what is it that you love that you'd like to share with our listeners today? Well, first off, podcasts are amazing. I used to listen to a lot more of them when I was traveling <laughs> and in the car. But as of the, this COVID year, it's, uh, it's hard to find as much time, especially with my one-year-old son. But I love podcasts, anything that's, that's growth-minded, right? So I'll listen to a variety from real estate, business. Uh, you know, I love, I, Greg Harrelson's a great friend of mine. So I love listening to his Level Up podcast, which is a great one. So if anyone out there hasn't heard that, it's, it's, it's really, it, it's good. And then as far as like all the way to like, my favorite sport is soccer. So I listen to a lot of soccer podcasts too, right? So it's like anything from business and then personal development all the way to, to sports. I'm, uh, yeah. and, and then if you've never listened to, um, it's like a history podcast. I love listening to history. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it, I'll, 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 I'll figure it out, but it's amazing. So anyway, podcasts are great. Uh, as far as reading my, my, one of my favorite books of all time is um, Dale Carnegie, how to, uh, when friends and influence people mm -hmm. is uh, that like lit a light bulb in my brain. If you haven't read it, then you, you need to go read it. And, and what's great about it is you can pick it up and just read a story. You don't have to read it from uh, front to back, but that opened my eyes up to how to like take communication as something that you just do to something that you can make not only a habit out of as far as doing it at a very high level, but making communication a skill. And so that's something that really went off in my head as a light bulb and something that I've been working on my whole life. When I think about the type of person I am, I feel like I'm a person that uh, communicates very well, but connects people. I'm like a connector. I'm an in-between person. I'm going to always be finding a way to, to help people, whether it's working with us or working with another company or this company or that company and a referral or whatever. And, and that book opened my eyes to, to how to use communication to put yourself in a better position to be successful. Awesome. You actually are self-aware of how you're communicating now versus just showing up and talking, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which can work for some people, but having a little bit of both, I think is good. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. What's your favorite place, Scott, to visit? Oh, that's a great question, man. I know you're away now. Uh, thanks for joining the show today. Well, yeah, just, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I had never gone to Italy and I went a couple of years ago. That was by far my favorite time I've ever spent. I was with my wife. And I think what was so great about Italy, I know when you ask these questions, you want to know why probably. What's so great about Italy is the culture there hoods, the, the social, the connecting with other people, that is the number one thing. Um, and then work comes second. And it's not yeah. say they don't work hard, but it's, it's in that order where it, it is. it's much Correct. more in the United States. It is not in that order. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So that's a, that's a great perspective on that. Tell me where in Italy did you go? So we went, um, went to Rome, which was my favorite, uh, Trastevere, I think is what it's called. It's a little bit outside of Rome is where we stayed. And it was like this local little community and just the best food. So we were in Rome. We went to Venice for a little bit, which is chaos, but you kind of got to see it. Yeah. Uh, we were in Tuscany for five days. You kinda see it. You kind of got to smell it too, right? Yeah. See it, smell it, spend way too much on a gondola ride and say, yeah. we're never doing this again, but enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy the one because uh, we're not spending 300 euros for 15 minutes ever again. Um, and then, uh, and then we went to Cinque Terre, which is the, the five little towns along the coast that are like, I think it's on the Mediterranean side. Up in, yeah, in down in the south. I've never been down there. Yeah, it's actually north. It's not south. It's, oh, it's, it's not north. where Positino is. It's, it's oh, okay. north. And, and that little, those little towns along the coast were, I mean, it was just delightful. It was amazing. So yeah, Great. that was a trip. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So tell us about your favorite thing to do in your personal time. Right now, man, it's spending time with my son. Like he's I, one? I, yeah, he's one, he's like 13 months and uh, it's the most gratifying and amazing experience that I've 
had my whole life. I, I always wanted to be a dad. I'm 39 years old and I got to be a dad when I was 38. Um, and so every, every minute that is free when I'm not, you know, trying to build our business, uh, I'm, I'm spending with him, whether it's doing a bike ride or activities, we're actually going to go on some hikes out here. I, I bought a new hiking backpacks. So I can put them on top, go on some hikes. And, and so I just, you know, introducing him to things that I love to do, but spending that time with him is, and it's only going to, you know, continue, obviously he's one years old. So there's only so much you can do, but that's yeah. what I spend my time doing right now. Congratulations, Scott. I can't Thanks, believe man. it's already 13 months. Uh, I know. <laughs> so, wow. Um, what's the best way to get a hold of you, Scott? Uh, if people want to reach you. So Scott at realsync.com and that's R E A L S Y N C H. Got to throw that on there on the live, but realsync.com. Uh, you can just email me or if you, if you go to our, obviously you go to our website, you can find out more information about all the things we integrate with. And then also, um, call my cell anytime you want. 703-565-7000. Nice and easy. Okay. Wow. You got a 7,000. I kept it. When I lived in DC, I had to keep it. I had it. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, Scott, thanks so much for being on the show and listeners. Thank you for joining us again today. Don't forget to go and give us a five-star review. If you enjoyed this, share it out to your friends. The more people that hear this, the more we'll be able to keep doing this and the more we'll be able to keep getting quality people on the show. So thank you for listening again today. We'll catch up with everybody next week. And Scott, thanks again for joining us today. No problem, Brian. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us on our podcast. If you have an interest in a free seven-day trial of Sisu, go to sisu.co, S-I-S-U dot C-O. Make sure that you use the coupon code GRIT, that's G-R-I-T, to waive all your set of fees and receive a 10% discount on your subscription. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and want to subscribe, search GRIT, the real estate growth mindset on iTunes, Spotify, or Podbean. And with that, we'll catch you next time. Take care.